Hi, this is Chris Young, and I'm here with Bill Banco. We're going to show you how to assemble this open source infrared transmitter and receiver board. Now, this board uses three transistors. As you can see in the schematic, T1 is a PN 2222 NPN transistor, and T2 and T3 are uh, 2N 2907 transistors that are PNP. These parts look almost identical, so we recommend you don't take them out of the bag until you're really ready to use them so you don't get them mixed up. Here's the PN2222 NPN transistor that we're going to insert first into the T1 slot. You have to bend the leads on the transistor apart a little bit to get it to line up with the holes in the circuit board. You insert it with the flat side facing to the left as indicated on a silk screen printed on the board. And here is the transistor in position. Next we need the PNP transistors, two of them. They're the PN2907 parts. We'll get two of them out, bend the pins, and insert them into positions T2 and T3. Again, the silk screen indicates that the flat side of the transistor should be facing left on both T2 and T3, just like it was on T1. Next, we will insert the 1K ohm resistor into position R1. Bend the leads at 90 degrees and insert them through the holes. Of course, on a resistor, the orientation doesn't matter. Now we're going to flip the board over and do some soldering. Tin your tip to prepare it, and then solder each wire. As you can see, we've bent them out so that it holds the piece in place while we're soldering. We're going to skip ahead a bit. After you get some of them soldered, you might want to stop and clip off some of the leads to get them out of your way. Use a pair of diagonal cutters and clip it close to the solder point. We're going to save some of these scraps of wire because we can use them as jumpers later on. We're going to rebend some of these leads to get them into a better position for soldering and solder the last of these joints. And clip them off as well. Now we're going to solder in the two LEDs. It doesn't matter which one goes in which side, but the long lead on the LED needs to go on the right. We have two different kinds of LEDs. One is a wide angle and one is a narrow angle, and they can go in either position as long as you get the long lead to the right. Now you may want to insert it all the way in like that, but I sort of prefer to put a little slack in it so you can bend it out and bend it at any angle that you want. So leave the leads a little bit long rather than putting it all the way in flush. And we're bending the leads on the back side to hold it in place. Now we insert the other LED in position. Again, the long lead goes on the right. This one has a slight blue tint to it. That's the narrow angle. LED, the other one is a wide angle LED. Now we flip the board over and we're going to solder these in place. And when we're finished, we will clip the leads and turn the board back over again. Now we have some decisions to make. 
there is a place for some current limiting resistors leading into the LEDs. They're at positions R2 and R3. These are 33 ohm resistors. For some applications, you will want them in place, but for others, you will just want to put in a piece of jumper wire. So we're going to show you how to do the jumper wire first. See the tutorial for the reasons why we may or may not want those 33 ohm resistors. This is a piece of scrap resistor lead that we cut off of the R1 resistor. We're going to bend it into a very tight U-shape. It has to be very narrow because the holes are one-tenth of an inch apart. I want to slip this one into R3 and make another one and slip it into R2. This is if we do not need the current limiting 33 ohm resistors. And there the jumper is in place. Now we'll make an identical one and put it into R2. Again, this is just an ordinary piece of wire that we've bent into a tight U shape. After this is in place, you'll turn the board over, solder the back side, and clip off the excess leads. Now we're going to show you how to put in the 33 ohm resistors as an option. We bend the resistor in a tight U shape like this. Because it's a resistor, the orientation doesn't matter. We just stick it in and it sits there vertically like that. Then we prepare another one and put it in the R3 position the same way. Turn the board over and we will solder the leads and clip them off. This completes the transmit portion of the board. Optionally, you can also add one or two receiver chips. We'll show you how to insert those now. There are lots of different ways that you can insert these chips facing in different directions. And we'll show you how that works. We will start with the TSOP38438. This chip looks almost identical to the TSMP 58,000. So don't take it out of the bag until you're ready to use it because it's very easy to mix them up. The, when the lens on the TSOP is facing you, the pin on the left is pin 1 and it always goes in a square pad. In the upper left corner you can see that pad is square while the others are round. So you can insert it in this orientation facing rearward. Optionally, you can turn it 90 degrees and have it facing to the left. Again, pin 1 goes in the square hole. And there it is in a leftward facing position. Or if you want it facing right, you can put it that way. There's another square hole in the lower right. So pin 1 again goes in the square hole. And finally, you can turn it 90 degrees that way and have it facing forward. Again, pin 1 in the square hole. Depending on your application, you might want to put the receiver on the back side of the board. And that's possible too, in any of four orientations. As long as you get pin 1 in a square pad, it should work properly. For our particular application, we want the receiver on the front side of the board in the rearward facing position like this. Now we could put it all the way flush to the board, but like the LEDs, I like to be able to bend it a little bit up or down depending on how I want to use the board. When the chip is in place, turn the board over, solder the leads, and clip off the excess.
and that completes the major portion of the assembly of the board. There's one more option. In the upper left corner, you can add a TSMP58000. See the tutorial on why you would or would not want to add this particular device. Like the TSOP chip, on the other side, the TSMP can be soldered into any one of four orientations on either side of the board. We're going to use the same orientation as we did on the other device. Once it's in place, turn it over, solder in the leads, and clip off the excess. Now the board is fully populated with all of the parts. We could solder in some header pins to connect the board, but for our particular purpose, we're going to use solid core hookup wire because we want to be able to plug the wires into a breadboard for experimental purposes. We use a red wire for the power supply, strip the end of it, and stick it in one of the power supply pins. There are several power supply options that are described in the tutorial. I like to use green wires for ground. It's a good mnemonic remembrance that green means ground. Bill argued with me and said it should have been black. But he recently released a video where he used blue ground wires. So I'm not going to pay any attention to that. Sorry, Bill. We're going to use a yellow wire for the LED driver. We're using a blue wire on the line marked receive, that goes to the TSOP chip, and a black wire on the line marked learn, that goes to the TSMP chip. Now we turn the board over and solder the wires in place and clip off the excess. We have one more option to take care of. This board has the opportunity to supply the LED driver and the receiver chips separately. But we're going to use the same power wire for both of them. So we're going to put a jumper in place that jumpers together the two power buses. Again, this is just a piece of wire made out of a leftover scrap of resistor lead. And we put it in place, solder it, and clip the leads. And that's the completed board. See the tutorial that explains in more detail the various optional parts of the assembly. Many thanks to Bill Banco of AT Makers who assembled this board for this video.